we currently have the one user. If you wanted to add another user, you can uh, invite them. So let's see what that process looks like. I'm gonna add a user here. And then it says this, uh, this count towards your user limit. So standard user, that means uh, you can give them full or limited access without admin privilege. So they're not the admin, but they have, they have full or limited access. And then you've got the company admin. Uh, they can see and do everything. This includes sending money, changing passwords, and adding users. Not everyone should be an admin. So usually the setup would be you've got one admin and then you set the rest up as standard. That would be the typical kind of process you would think. So these don't count toward your user limit. So then you have reports, meaning we have five users. They're saying these don't count towards our user limits. Uh, they can see all reports. So now we're just giving someone access to the report. So if you're doing business with someone and, you're, and they want the financial information, you can of course print the reports and give them to someone. But you might say, hey, look, here's, here's access to all the reports. So you can see whatever reports you want. They just don't have the capacity to do any changes in your account. That's also another option that you could give, say, to an accountant. If you, if you just want your accountant to look up the information they need in order to do the taxes and you don't want them to do anything to your, to your account or anything like that, have any other access, then you could possibly give them this one down here. And again, it doesn't count towards your user limit, which is nice. So, and then it says, uh, great news. You have a QuickBooks Time subscription. Invite your, your team. So you can also invite them uh, in a time situation to enter, basically enter their time as well. And so I won't get into that right now, but let's go. Well, just a quick overview on it. You know, that means that they can basically enter their time into the system. And the time is something that you can use to invoice with and or to use as part of the uh, payroll process. So let's go to the next. And then we've got our options. So. How much access do you want this user to have? So we've got all access, uh, payroll access. You can have all and you can check off the payroll. They can say none here and then no, no accounting features access. This user can't use any of the accounting features, but you can still let them manage certain things and submit their own timesheets. So you might use that in that scenario where you want them to enter basically the timesheets and have very limited access. And then you've got limited. If you choose limited, then you've got your items down here, the customers and the vendors. So remember, we talked about the cycles. So usually when you're working in an accounting department, you might be working in a particular cycle. So if I jump on over to the flow chart here, we've got the vendors, the customers and the employees. So as things become more specialized, you might be working in just the vendor cycle or the accounts payable or the purchases cycle, the expenses cycle or you might just be working on the customer side of things. And then further, as you get larger, you're gonna be wanting to separate uh, duties within the cycles. So it becomes more difficult for people to basically commit fraud, right? So I'm gonna close this back out. So if you choose the customers, then this is what they have. This user can enter estimates, invoices, sales receipt, credit memos, and refunds. So those are typically the things, the forms and the customer cycle enter chargers and credits, create and delete statements. So the statements are the things that are used to, to try to collect on the accounts receivable, which if you're in an accrual system, is gonna often be a large part of the job uh, when you're working there. I'll receive payments from customers, fill out timesheet for anyone, add, edit, and uh, delete customers, products, and services. So that might be part of the, you know, the, the, the process when you're billing someone to add the customers as you're doing and the products and services, what you're selling. View customer register and reports, view tax rates and aging settings, use and adjust sales tax and sales transactions and general journal entries, including manually overriding calculated tax amounts, and then add, edit, and delete currencies and then edit uh, uh, exchange rates. They can't uh, print checks, including refunds, make bills and purchases billable to customers, uh, add, edit, and delete accounts and quantity on hand, view bank registers, see total income and expense amounts on home, vendor, and in customer pages, run tax reports or view tax history, prepare or file a sales tax return or record sales payments, 
set up new or charge existing tax agencies or settings, set up multi-currencies, perform home currency adjustments. If you go to the vendor side, you could select both of them. If we go to the vendor side of things, then you've got the in vendor information, which you would think would be mainly the forms included in this cycle on the flow chart. And so you've got the enter in the bills, enter cash, enter pay bills, print checks, add, edit, uh, view vendor AP, view tax rates, use and adjust sales tax, run tax reports, and so on there. So those are the two options. Let's say that we just go with all here on them. And then I'm going to say next and then select user settings. Do you want this user to add, edit and remove users? So the default is no. And that would typically be the case because usually that would be something you would expect done by the admin. Do you want this user to edit company info? Again, no usually would be the case because you would think that would be done by the admin. Do you want this user to manage subscriptions? And you probably say no, because usually you would want that to be done by the admin account. So I'm going to say next. And then uh, what's, what's their current, their contact info. So we'll invite them. So you put their name and then their email, and then they can be invited from there. And then once we've done that, so now I've, in, I've invited someone here and, and then they haven't accepted. So I can resend the invitation. If I so choose, then I would contact them and say, Hey, you should get an email with the invitation on their side. The email should look something like this. It says, hi, uh, they've asked you to join the QuickBooks plus team for get great guitars, uh, ready to get started. Then let's go. I got questions and so on. So we can then go to the let's go.